And folks, we are live at the Maryland Municipal League Annual Conference 2023 in Ocean City. What an amazing event. I'm so excited to have the CEO, Ms. Teresa Coons. How are you doing today? I'm awake. I've been awake since five. Okay. We're surviving. Okay, so yes. I'm excited to have you here. You know, you and I spoke back at Winter Mako. Yes, sir. That's when we first met. It was great. And we said, let's make this happen. And here we are. And here we are. Thank you so much to you and your team. Your team has been amazing. They're Shout out to a the wonderful. Whole crew. MML is amazing. The, crew, the team is great. This is amazing. You know, I, I didn't even know what MML was last year this time. I had no idea what it was. You're not the first person to tell me that recently, and I'm glad we're changing that. And that's why we're here to tell the world, share it to people out there, the listeners, the viewers who will be watching and tuning into this. Absolutely. So thank you so much for everything you've done in your team. Appreciate it. Thank you, Aaron. We're happy to have you here. This is great. So tell me, how did you get involved? Like, how did you end up at the Maryland Municipal League? Just give us a little quick background. Uh, <laughs> let me give you my work background. Okay. Start there. Yeah. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce for most of my career. They're the largest trade association in the world, representing 3 million businesses. Started there. I ended up going to the Greater Washington Board of Trades. So I went from the national perspective, then to state. So that was D.C., Maryland, and Virginia for a few years. Mm -hmm. Then I had some kids. Took a few, time, a few years off to raise them and ended up working for the Maryland Realtors for the last seven sessions in Annapolis. And it's been fantastic. I got to represent the Southern Maryland Association of Realtors. And last year, this job came up and I was like, oh, that would be one way to come back for a full-time, real career now that my kids are older, all in school. And I wasn't going to apply. And I called a few of the mayors I had been lobbying and worked with, and every single one of them pushed me hard. I called two former past presidents, both said the same thing, oh, you would be perfect, apply for it. So they did a national search, 162 people applied, and here I am. And well, we are, I'll tell you, it's happy. a dream come true, it's amazing. We're happy to have you here, and I thank you for thinking outside the box. Oh, and absolutely. that's what it's all about, being creative and figure out there's other means of communication out there besides the regular ways of communication. So thank you for thinking outside Absolutely. of the box and being very creative with everything. MML needs to tell its story. You are a great person to help us tell our story. We're doing a lot of good work. Now tell us about this week. I mean, I know you've been busy. I've seen you in so many pictures. I, I basically update with you on social media. I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's where she was yesterday. So tell me about this wild week it has been for you. This Absolutely. is your first one. This is my actual first MML summer conference. So okay. that was fun trying to make decisions on something I've never seen or actually experienced before. It is amazing. I am really excited to say we are very close to having our highest all-time record attendance. We have been here for over 52 years in Ocean City, our host city, and we are 22 people away from meeting our highest record ever. And we're hoping that those folks are registering today and coming on site. Wow. It's Congratulations. huge. Congratulations. So we have the governor, lieutenant governor, the attorney general, the comptroller, and we have 29 cabinet secretaries here today to meet with over 1,500 municipal officials. That's amazing. That's huge. That's amazing. Absolutely. Congratulations Thank to you. Your team. Our wow. team did an amazing job. I mean, this, this whole setup, the whole, it's amazing. It's great setup. I met so many amazing people here yes. the last couple of days, and I'm very thankful and just very happy to be a part of this. So and if I get to say, we're sitting in the expo hall. So this is really kind of a cool story. In the past, we've only been able to fit 249 people. We expanded this year. We have 285 booths here at the expo hall, sold out that too. So we have people who are ready and wanting to do business with our cities and towns here in Maryland. So we're excited. Wow. So when people ask, what is MML? What, would you, what definition would you give them? Because a lot of people may not know what it is and never heard of it. What would you say a quick Layman's term definition. Just. Absolutely. So MML represents the 157 cities and towns in Maryland. But I think the best definition is where 2 million Marylanders call home. This is where people live. It's a community. It's thriving. It's where people go out to dinner. It's where people went after COVID and right. trying to come back out. They went to Baltimore City where you are. Right. They went to Inner Harbor or Little Italy. That's, that's municipalities. That's the home. It's the heart of Maryland. And do you guys work with municipalities with certain everyday laws that may be happening or Absolutely. things of that nature? Like, give me an example, like a law or something like that, that we probably would not know that you guys have helped out or ironed out or the conversations may have started with your winter meetings or your some things like that. Give me an Absolutely. example. So we have actually a legislative committee full of volunteers from all across the state that work with our staff. It's led by Angelica Thupari. She's amazing. Justin Fiore. It's a great team. We had, a oh gosh, I want to say 2,000 bills reviewed took positions on over 100 of them. There was 32 bad ones. My team killed 29 of those. Wow. 
That's amazing. And three, wow. the three remaining, they got it amended so bad, so much that it wasn't bad anymore. So let's talk about a bill that most people have heard of but don't know the impact on municipalities. Okay. Cannabis. Cannabis is a brand new industry. In the 87-year history of Maryland Municipal League, we have never been involved in sales tax revenue. We are now receiving sales tax revenue for cannabis, which opens in three days. Yeah, yeah. So those municipalities that will have cannabis stores, growth in their cities and their jurisdictions, will be able to get some sales tax. Most, most people don't know municipalities purely exist on the real estate tax. Wow. So we don't receive, we're one of 10 states in Maryland. Maryland's one of those 10 states that does not get sales tax. So that's, that's great because a lot of people probably don't, don't even know that. That's, no, that's and it, it's a huge win for us. We're going to build upon that. We hope that in the future we can actually grow into different areas. We're actually doing a cannabis summit in August. We're very excited. We have the chair of the Lettuce Lay Black Caucus, Janelle Wilkins. She's amazing coming to speak to us. Will Tilburg, the head of the Maryland Cannabis Administration, mm. and C.T. Wilson, the chair of the committee and the architect of the bill. So we're going to do things a little bit different. We're going to bring in the speakers. We're talking about social equity. We're talking about human resources and what towns and cities should do. So mm. we're we're excited to bring this forward and progress a little bit as an organization. I love hearing that because I, that's a hot topic right now. Absolutely. And everybody wants to know where's the money going? Where what's going on? Are our schools going to get any money? Are you know things like that nature? Because we've all heard. The whole thing about casinos, how yes, the money was education, going back, yep. the education. Everybody kind of like wants to know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. what, are, what are your thoughts? You know, things that nature. So I like that you brought that up. That was anything else exciting besides cannabis that you have out there? <laughs> I, I we heard have storm water earlier, but, okay. what, but whatever you think, whatever you think. So one of the things that we want to prove to not only our peers and our other sister organizations is that we do cry, provide economic impact in the state. So we are doing a big study, releasing it in December, economic impact for every city and town in the state. And we're going to show we, we hire members, we provide health care. We do a lot of things outside of just being a government organization or a government association, excuse me. So the fact that we provide health care and insurance, property, liability insurance through our local government insurance trust as a founding member there, that's a huge deal. Mm. We're bringing in a new firm called VC3 Cybersecurity for our cities and towns. They're the biggest um, targets of these data hackers, frankly. Wow. And so we're going to have that as an opportunity and a benefit for our members I really think the economic impact study, we're gonna have our first state of the municipality and release that there in December. Mm. We're excited about showing our worth. And then our last big thing, and you'll know about this, we saw each other on Sunny Die, yes. walking around State Circle. We, we closed our MML headquarter doors on Friday for the first time, last time in 35 years. Wow. And we're moving to State Circle. Wow. So in three weeks, MML, we're up and out. And moving on up is what I keep saying. We're moving on up. We're, I love it. We are the voice of local government. We need to be on state circle. Yeah, you, you need to be right there. Absolutely. So right we'll be the there this fall. We'll invite you to the party. Uh, you know I like a good party. <laughs> and, you know, I would, I would come down and do a conversation with you. Absolutely. And we, and we can do a live talk and just have fun with I you. I would love it. That would be something. Let's book it. Let's make that happen. But I really believe, again, you have been a really great leader. Thank You're you. You're doing amazing things. And we're here now talking again. I'm very appreciative of everything your team. Now, I, I want to reiterate that because, you know, you don't know. When you talk to people, like, yeah, we're going to make this happen. Shout out to my man, Steve Lopez. <laughs> Every now we're going back on emails. Um, hopefully he's watching. But, you know, this is, this is amazing. I, I'm really enjoying the atmosphere of people are talking with everybody. Yes. And it feels like a, like you said, a family. It is it an extended like family, family, which our president says constantly, and she's absolutely right. It definitely feels like a family. Anything cool that we can think about that can, you can give us a little secret maybe coming out of this conference that we might not hear hmm. or might hear a little bit later on? Anything? You might hear a little bit later on the closing session. We have a keynote speaker. You may have heard of him, uh, Wes Moore. Oh, okay, okay. The <laughs> governor, okay. Yeah, he Shout may be coming Wes. down, taking a walk through later. We'll see if he comes. has a chance to be down here. We'll see, we'll see, <laughs> we'll see. Well, again, what would you want people to walk away with from this interview about MML? What do you want people to walk away with say you yes. mentioned it, team. A leader is nothing without their team. MML has one of the best teams out there. We're small but mighty. If anyone needs anything from a municipal official to staff to elected official, call us. We'll get the answer, and we'll find a solution if we don't have it. Um, what's your website? Is it just so we can people? Oh, actually, that's a pretty big one. I should have said that. Yeah, we got to hey. plug, plug it. Brand new website. Opened up last Wednesday. We've gone live for five days now. mdmunicipal.org. Take a look. It's really clean. It's fresh. You got all our team names on there. You can reach out to any of us. You have a by issue for our advocacy team. We're excited about where we're headed. That's a beautiful thing. Yes. All right. Now, I'm not letting you off the hook. 
Okay, let's play the game. Yeah, you already know. You already <laughs> know. I'm not letting you off the hook. It is speed round. This is one okay. of my favorite. All right. I've been watching you. I know. Crabs <laughs> or crab cakes? Crabs. Mon we did high five, Sunday high night five. with a full team. High five. You know why I like crabs? Because you put your cell phone down. You get to have a conversation with each other. We're not texting. We're not. We're, you're not going to put your dirty crab hands on your phone. No, not no at all. No one's doing that. No it's, it's a socialization. And that's what it's about. I need. I need people to do that again. We need to bring that back. All right. Pizza or chicken wings? I'm going to go chicken wings, drums. Drums? Look at you on the drum. Okay. <laughs> Blue cheese or ranch? Blue cheese all the way. Oh, okay. 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 We're, we're, we're crushing it there. All right. And then let's talk about this. Your favorite music group. If you could go to one concert, That's dead or problem. alive, who would you go to? Oh. Dead or alive? That's a tough anybody. one. Honestly, Missy Elliott. Oh. Oh. That's a good one. That's a solid one. I've always wanted to see her. I would love to see her. Ah. Uh, what you, what you, what you, no, I'm here, but, <laughs> when you play but, Work It, I can walk off work stage. It, ah. We're good. <laughs> you know what? We could do a definitely a walk-off song. I could bring my DJ next time, and we could do a walk-off song. So we did that, uh, another thing. But I love that. Missy I, I'll make you laugh. They asked me if I wanted a walk-out song. I said, if I did, it had to be the hot stepper. And they looked at me Ooh, like I lost my mind. I like that. That's fine. Do you have a walk-off song for the, for the conference? I'm going to find out later. You need one. There we go. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Well, I try to have fun. I love it. you got to have fun. You know what? You enjoy life. And I always tell people you can't get time back, so enjoy it. Thank enjoy you, it Aaron. Fullest. Thank you, guys. Thank you so much for having me and our team. And love, peace, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. All right. When you give to United Way, your gift could be the first spark of something bigger. It can help provide nutritious food for a family in need. Because eating healthy shouldn't be a luxury. It can help someone with housing challenges and be a catalyst for a new beginning. Because a safe space to call home is the foundation for building a better future. Give today, spark something bigger. All right, folks, we are back. And what an amazing conference, MML 2023. And we have a special guest. Uh, I interviewed this guest last year and he had a different title. Now I'm like, all right, we got, we, he's big, we got, he's, he was big time then. Now he's in bigger time. He has a Secret Service crew. I do a background check to talk with him. But I'm teasing all jokes aside. Mr. Secretary Jacob Day, how are you with the housing? How are you? Look, I'm great. <laughs> it's just good to be with you again. Good to be here in Ocean City for <laughs> MML, among my people, you know, <laughs> local officials. It's, it's like a homecoming. I love it. You know, I, 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 when we first met, you were the mayor of Salisbury. That's right. And we talked last year at a different conference. Yes, we did. And I'm look up, and you know, when your nomination came out, I, I went to my friends like, I know that guy. They're like, No, you don't. I'm like, Let me pull the footage for you. I know that. I know him. And so it's a, a great to see you in this new role. Thank you. Um, how did we get here? How did we get here? Like, explain to the audience how do we get from the mayor to the secretary? That's a that's a jump. Well, look, people change. Things change. <laughs> for example, you know. A year ago, you and I were over there. Now right. we got this like premier we're position nice. over here. We're nice with the the gold carpet all <laughs> spread out. I mean, you know, we got the step and repeat. I feel like you know everybody's moving up. Right. Um, as as a mayor, you have to care about every aspect of people's lives. Um, you know, that doesn't necessarily mean that you have direct responsibility over each aspect of people's lives. For example. Mayors in Maryland have nothing to do with the education system. But do I care about what goes on in schools? You better believe it. Right. Because it's going to affect, it's going to spill out in my streets. It's going to affect the kids growing up in my community. Uh, I care that they're safe. I care that they're loved and nurtured and, and, and leaving lives of fulfillment. Um, and so one of the things I cared about was housing. Okay. It, was, it was a roof over the head of my citizens. And um, so I, I tried to do a number of things to enhance and improve the housing conditions and dynamics in my city to try to recognize a crisis when we began to face one. Uh, and, and by the way, that crisis is statewide and nationwide. Mm -hmm. We stopped building housing in this country at a pace that kept up with population growth back in 2008 when the financial crisis hit and we have not caught up since. And so I recognize that as a mayor and, and now I get to work on that challenge every single day. That's great. I, I love hearing that back, sir, because I always like, Wow, okay, that's unique. I like that, I like that. And with some things that you like, that you've learned 
quick on the job. Like you've been there for almost a close, well, not six months, seven months? Uh, about five, uh, five four, four or five four months. Four or five months, okay. Yeah, what have you months. learned, like just right trial by fire? Have you learned anything? A lot. Okay. A lot. And um, one of the things is, you know, as you said, I'm a mayor. And before that, I was an architect and an urban designer. Like my background is in, is in making cities, making places, making buildings. My background is not in finance. And uh, I've now found out I'm running the largest bank that the state of Maryland has. Hey. Uh, you know, I'm running our, our financial in institution. The way we engage in making great places, in healing communities, in rebuilding places, in building housing, is we're a lender, first and foremost. Right. So the way we engage is we have taxpayer funds that we leverage for bigger impact out in the streets uh, of Maryland and out in, uh, you know, uh, the, the housing stock of Maryland. So that's how we engage. So I figured out how to run one of those. I've also figured out that um, I love, I absolutely love traversing the state. Mm. So, um, you know, me and, and uh, members of our team, uh, Ben Penserga, who's here, uh, we travel the state every single day. We're in different jurisdictions. I've got uh, eight or nine jurisdiction days, uh, many days of, of the week. And the beauty of that is I get to see neighborhoods in Baltimore City. I get to see neighborhoods in Montgomery County and Washington County and, and Cecil County and Wicomico County all in the course of the same day and week. You know, it's interesting. I always look up, because I follow you on social media, and I'm like, he's been in Baltimore again? And I'm like, I got, I got to catch up with them, you know? And it's always weird. We're two and a half hours from Baltimore, but you're, we're all, you're always there, hang, you know, come doing meetings and whatnot. And I would love to do something like later on with you in Baltimore. Anytime. With the audience. And people can learn a little bit more about, uh, I've been doing a lot more live shows. Something that's really cool that people can hear what's going on. So we have a better understanding of housing he, and what's going on. Here's what I love about that. And, and I want to talk about a couple of things. One, first and foremost, is that whether people realize it or not, they care about housing. They do. When we get shelter right, when we get those fundamentals right, so many other things and opportunities in life can fall in line. So the outcomes we care about, whether those are academic, you know, income, uh, life trajectory, uh, recidivism, you name it, all of those can be improved when we address shelter and safety and comfort and those things that come along with housing. The second is that if there are three conversations being had around the American dinner table right now, I guarantee you one of them is housing affordability. It's the mortgage, it's our utilities, it's our rent, it's what the land, what's the landlord doing, it's can we afford to buy another place, can we afford to keep this place, the bank is knocking on the door. Those are the conversations happening around the American dinner table today. So you better believe that we're keenly aware of those conversations and needing to hear from people and needing to have those conversations and tell people we have a vision for you. We have a vision for how to address those challenges. Uh, the last thing I, I'd share with you is about Baltimore is, is this, is if, I, if I'm not in Baltimore City, the heart and soul of our state, then I think we're neglecting our purpose as state leaders. You know, I can't just be in Salisbury every single day. I can't just be in Baltimore every single day either. But the center matters. And it's the same thing I've said for years about our downtown in Salisbury or any other community. The center matters. And, mm -hmm. and, and uh, our city is, uh, Baltimore City is the heart and soul of the state. We got to get it right. We got to leverage all the state resources we have. We've got to be there to recognize that we got into this over a long period of time. Population loss happened yeah, over a long big, period of time. Population loss. Some of the challenges yeah. with crime happened over a long period of time. Economic opportunity. And let's not forget that deliberate government decision making caused a lot of that. You know, I, I thank you for coming to Baltimore City because sometimes we feel like we're a little neglected. We were forgotten about. And I'm glad that you and the administration have really put an emphasis on coming and just showing up and just trying to help out. So really appreciate that. My pleasure. That, 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 that means a lot because a lot of people watching and listening are like, wow, what, what are they going to do with Baltimore? But you being there means a lot. And well, people really care about that. And you got to show up. You got you got to vote with your feet. You got to show up. Where you stand matters. And so, um, so I think showing up matters. Uh, the other thing I'll say is, everywhere I go in the state, I do find the sentiment that people feel like they are forgotten about or left behind. Right. And and that's the whole mantra of our governor is mm -hmm. is we're not going to leave you behind. Correct. And Correct. so whether it's Baltimore City, whether it's Southern Maryland, Western Maryland, the Eastern Shore, uh, uh, Prince George's and Montgomery counties, Central Maryland, we're going to be there. We're going to be there.
and, and I'm going to show up, and I guarantee you the governor's going to show up. He's already, he's already ready, beat me there. The <laughs> lieutenant governor's going to show up. Um, so we're going to let people know that uh, we're serious people uh, addressing policy challenges with innovative solutions, but we'll also be there to listen and to learn and to help respond to the challenges that you're facing. Do you have a rollout plan going forward, like as far as uh, like the next six months to a year of what your vision of going forward with, again, affordable housing, you know, like the lending practices, you know how that goes with lending practices. I know that interest rate is outrageous right now to buy houses. So a person who could buy a house a couple of years ago, a little bit cost a little bit, a little bit more money right now to buy it now. That's right. So what, I mean, just give us some of your points. You bet. Yeah, go ahead. So, so that's absolutely right. It's, uh, we got into this after 2008. Right. That supply problem was generated then, but it's exacerbated every single day by rising interest rates, right. by a labor market that is is missing talent. You know, we got a lot of people that need to be brought back into the labor market. We got a lot of people we need to help train up so they can be successful in the opportunities that exist today. And you better believe there are construction opportunities that are waiting, um, and supply chain challenges. And and that obviously affects and is connected to inflation as well. So mm -hmm. costs of everything are rising, costs of borrowing money are rising, access to the people who can build the housing that we need is, is constrained. We've got a lot of work to do. Yes. So I, I think that fundamentally we have to recognize that um, we have to take a, a whole of housing approach. So I, I believe that those at the lowest end of the housing security spectrum are affected most. And so it begins by adopting a principle of shelter for all. So we say, look, everyone, the least of these, right? Everyone deserves a roof over their head, deserves a place of dignity and a place of comfort and safety. And so permanent supportive housing is going to be something you're going to see us invest policy in and dollars in. Permanent supportive housing is, um, it, it, it basically takes a housing first approach and says that what we want to do for you as a chronically homeless person, as a person experiencing chronic homelessness, meaning you can't seem to get into secure house, mm. whether in and out of shelters or totally unsheltered, we're going to get you into a permanent housing situation. Mm. That means, yes, government's going to take on a lot of the burden there. Mm. And we're then going to provide wraparound intensive case management services to help you address the underlying causes that got you there, whether that's mental health challenge, a substance abuse challenge, some combination, the economic conditions, the, the job skill conditions, whatever it might be. So all those things. So starting there, then we recognize that we've got vulnerable populations in the state that aren't chronically homeless, mm -hmm. disabled persons, veterans, people aging out of foster care, returning citizens coming out of jail or prison. Mm. All of those populations have a hard time getting housed. Mm. And the, in the wisdom of the General Assembly, they adopted a state voucher program. Now we've got to fund that program. We've got to bring the dollars to bear to actually make that program reality. It exists on paper. It exists in statute. But now we've got to bring the dollars to bear to, to have a state voucher program focused on those vulnerable populations. The next piece is just supply, supply, supply. I love that. We, and there's so that. many barriers to that. And I listed some of them. The others are nimbyism. There is oh, opposition to you know, people don't want other around them. Well, we've got to fix that. We've got to confront that. We've got to call it what it is and say, you don't get to decide that because we have to put the value of shelter for every single human being mm -hmm. in this state above whatever other values a local community thinks they're protecting and preserving. And that's going to be a challenging conversation, but it's one we've got to confront head on. You hit it right on the head, Nimby. I've seen that a lot, and I'm like, oh, okay, you want this, but not here. Okay, I... I understand. Okay, so I've learned a lot about that. Another thing you hit on that I really think is very important is that you said housing, about how crime. I really believe if people have options and opportunity to live places that they can live. Crime, it, that, they go hand in hand. They do. You want to live somewhere, you want to be somewhere, a different environment, you really want to be a part of it. Or you can't afford to be at this apartment complex and they're rejecting. Housing has a big thing with that, and I really like that you kind of said that a little bit earlier. You're so right. And so there are, there are two tracks that we are going to be spending a lot of time talking about over the next few years. Okay. One is fair housing. Mm -hmm. So um, the uh, every jurisdiction in the state must now adopt a fair housing plan, a fair housing policy that says how they're going to accommodate housing and not restrict uh, housing access for anyone. Right. And that's going to be challenging for them to actually deliver on those, those values. They have to articulate them and adopt them in a plan. But 
many communities are going to really struggle with living what they say on paper. Mm. And then it's going to be our responsibility as a state to hold them accountable. And if they don't, to say, well, you lose the right to say no to affordable housing. You lose the right to say no to housing in mm. your community. The, the next piece is going to be acknowledging that um, that the consequences, the externalities associated with uh, some of the housing that people uh, uh, are constrained to because it's the only option available mm -hmm. is the fact that we made it that way. We right. concentrated poverty. Mm -hmm. We redlined communities. Right, yeah. We led to divestment in neighborhoods. We then brought in highways that erased neighborhoods. Highway to Nowhere. Highway you know. to Nowhere is a great example yep. of that. And then we brought in urban renewal dollars to fix it by erasing entire neighborhoods mm -hmm. that were going to one day be redeveloped or right. have been redeveloped and gentrified. And so the people that were there are gone. Can't afford it. And so if, if some Maryland families were cast in different directions and in some cases, you know, cast in a direction where they lost out on opportunity because of their race, look no further than government for having caused that. Mm. So we have an obligation now to say, how are we going to make deliberate decisions to unwind that, to reinvest in communities and to reinvest in people? I like that. I like. So we could talk all day, Mr. Secretary. We could talk all day, but I know we got things going on. There's a great event. What would you say to people about MML? You were a part of it. I was. Like, to give us a little background about how MML helped you out, sure. impacted you, and whatnot. Sure. Look, I was the uh, I was the president of the municipal league um, uh, last year, so I'm the current past president until this afternoon when they have the the announcement of the uh, the new president and board. Um, what I would say is this is an organization filled with passionate people that care about their community, not necessarily trained as an expert in running a city, running a town, uh, but these are the people who have, li have lived and breathed it primarily because they cared about their neighbors. And they mm -hmm. cared about their community. And I've learned so much from my peers here uh, over the years. And it inspired me to want to give back. The number one reason that I ran for president of the Maryland Municipal League was because this organization had given me so much. I had not volunteered for all that much. I had not been one of those people that you know, tried to chair every committee and, and you know, be engaged in every role. Um, I, I simply learned, I, I participated, I enjoyed my time with people. We had a good time together. And then I decided, look, it's time to give back mm -hmm. and, and to volunteer and to serve. And so uh, this is a community, it's, it's an organization of community leaders. And, and forget that the, f the fact that they are quote unquote politicians, they're community leaders. Mm -hmm. These are people that stepped up and said, I'll make the tough decisions. And they got a target on their back because of it. They got a target on their front because of it. You know, these are people that have been through real challenges together, uh, particularly in the last few years, not only with COVID, mm -hmm. but ever since the murder of George Floyd, mm -hmm. uh, you know, community policing has been challenging, building trust in local government has been challenging. Um, it, it's been a tough go. And so I have a lot of admiration for the local officials in the room. I love it, folks. We're going to do a quick speed round with him. He did it last year, but we're going to do oh, it again. that's right. We're going to bring it back, see if he remembers this. <laughs> speed let's, round. Let's speed round. Here we go. Crab cakes or crabs? Oh, crab cakes. Oh, okay. Well, no, yeah. no. Don't, you, know, you don't want to get your hands dirty? I, do, I will, but if I'm given the choice. <laughs> All right. Chicken wings, flats or drums? Flats lately. Okay. Flats I, lately. I'm a flats guy. I love flats. I, look, I used to be a drums guy, and now I'm a flats guy. <laughs> Blue cheese or ranch with it? Ranch, always. Oh, no. We got to get that blue cheese, man. <laughs> ranch crew. Okay. Pizza, what, what, pizza, pepperoni or sausage? All the meat. Oh, All oh, the oh meat. you want meat lovers. Okay, you're it. a meat lovers. Yeah. Right. Okay. Spring or fall? Fall. What's your favorite sports team? I'm, I'm a Ravens. Okay. And, hey. uh, we'll stop there. We'll, <laughs> we'll stop, stop there. there. We'll stop there. <laughs> but thank you so much for coming on the show again. I'm excited that you know this is happening. Let's do something live in Baltimore. Figure something out. I know you have a busy I schedule. I love that. And like we can figure out six months down the road, but let's figure something out. We will make the time. All right. Thank you guys. We'll be right back with these messages. Thank you, my friend. And folks, we are back at this amazing conference, MML. What a day. Uh, we've had so many great guests. 
And our next guest is a friend of the show, a friend of No Picks of the Dark. Uh, we first um, met a sec special secretary uh, in Hagerstown. She was doing something in Hagerstown. And she was the mayor there. And then she was my co-host for a conference in Mako last year. Now, wow, I got it right because I, I, I know the name of it, but I'm going to get it right. She is the special secretary of opioid response. That's it. Ms. Keller, how are you? Secretary Keller, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks for having me back. Hey, we love having you. You are a favorite on the show. Uh, how have you been? Like, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen you. Yeah, it's been a whirlwind. A little bit of a whirlwind, but it's been well. Been That's well. great. That's great. Yeah. I mean, it's always great to have you on to talk and catch up on things. So let's talk about last time I saw you, you were mayor. Now you're sec special secretary. What? How does this all happen? Tell us about that. I mean, very, very you, upgrade, you upgraded like Beyonce, <laughs> but go ahead. So yeah, I was I was the mayor and I I endorsed our governor early. I, I just felt it in my soul the first time I met him. I was like, this is gonna be our next governor. Obviously I made the right choice, thankfully, uh, but we got to know each other pretty well over while he was campaigning. And I just talked about substance use issues every time I saw him, and I think he probably got tired of hearing me, so he was like, all right, let me go ahead and create this position for her, so she leaves me alone. I kid. I know but, you kid. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I, I think, I know the story. I know it's very near, dear to your heart, with one of your friends, and then that it passed away, unfortunately, um, and, you know, I know that's, that's something you're very care and passionate about. Yes. So we need somebody in that position. Thank who you. Who really care and passionate about What's going on? Thank I you. mean, we know about the science, but I need somebody who really is a nitty gritty, who's, uh, who's all about it, yeah. and who's really going to be talking to the people. So it's my heart's work. It's my heart's work. It, it makes me feel good coming to work every day. You know, eight people a day are dying in Maryland from overdose. Wow. Yeah, and that's just in Maryland. I so. mean, I've been following you all on social media, and you've been everywhere. You've been with the head czars. You've been with the federal government. What has that experience been like? You know, from being mayor of Hagerstown now to like you're talking to the heads of like, you know, the, the, the country. Like, how does that feel? It's been pretty surreal. You know, I never expected this. This position um, didn't exist prior to this administration. Um, so it's been it's been overwhelming. It's been very fulfilling. I feel like I can help save lives. And it's it's good. The Moore Miller administration is so focused on that and they know how important this issue is. So it's definitely a big change from being the mayor. Um, you know, I was the mayor of a town of 46,000 people, the fifth largest municipality in the state of Maryland, but now I have to be everywhere. So it's been a change. It's been a transition personally. I have a 15-year-old daughter. You know, I'm traveling a lot, but we're making it work. I love it. I love you making it work. And you yes. are the right person for the job. Thank so you. So let's talk a little bit about how did, you know, MML, we're here at a conference. Yes. Well, did you have, were you in the cabinet? Were you, uh, were you in the board or anything like that when you were mayor? I was. I was on the board of directors. Sorry about Mel. So okay. I feel like right at home. You know, all of these elected officials and the mayors and things. I, um, I know pretty well. So, and it like, felt good to come here. Being here, how does it feel to be in a different position, but you can actually help out and work at different angles? How does it feel being here? It's a little strange. It is still a, a weird adjustment not being an elected official. Like even yesterday there was the mayor's lunch and I like was so jealous because I'm not the mayor anymore. I can't go to the mayor's lunch. Mm -hmm. So little things, but it's been good to catch up with everyone and see the good work they're doing. I love it. And then what, what, <laughs> what would you say about MML that's really great that people may not know about and some of the things that, that has helped you as a mayor and now to where you are right now? I learned so much from the Maryland Municipal League. The first time I came here, I had no idea what to expect. Right. And the first class I went to was like municipal budgeting. And just right there in that hour and a half, I learned so much. So all of the classes, like coming here and investing your time and going to the classes and really like taking notes and listening to what people say, you're learning from the experts. You're learning from people that have experience. And it was definitely the best thing that I did coming here every summer. I felt like when I left, I could go do my job so much better than when I came. Every single year felt mm, like that. I love that. I didn't, yeah. You know, everybody has been talking about it and just how it has impacted them and how they've learned so many amazing things from people and learning from each other, from what, what they're doing over here. What are we doing here? We can collaborate. Yes. Collaboration is key for a lot of these conferences. Absolutely. Why well, recreate the wheel? If it's working somewhere else, let's try it in our municipality, see if it works there. All right. So, uh-oh, we got, we got a little noise background. <laughs> Don't worry about it. We keep on flowing. Let's talk about 
you brought some stuff here. I brought some stuff. So tell us a little, little, little bit about this this Narcan. Let's talk. I'll let you talk about it. All right. So I brought Narcan the camera, is the yeah, name the brand. Okay. It's naloxone. It, the not name brand. Okay. And so what this is, it reverses an opioid overdose. So oh, I'm going to train hold, you. Hold to your face. Yep. Yep. There you go. <laughs> I'm going to train you on what to do, okay. so you can now carry naloxone with you. And if you're ever in public or somewhere where someone is experiencing an overdose, you can save their life. Hey, I'm all about learning. Let's edu educate me, please. Yes. Please so, me, Ms. Secretary. let's talk about what an overdose looks like. First of all, if you come across someone and they are unconscious, uh, they may be turning blue, they may be turning gray. Uh, you may hear like a snoring, gurgling sound, or they might just be completely unconscious. You'll want to try to wake them up. Obviously, Captain Obvious, but you take your your hands and you do a sternum rub as hard as you can because that hurts and hopefully it's going to wake them up. Mm -hmm. um, if it doesn't, then you want to administer naloxone. So here is the really cool thing about Maryland. We have the Good Samaritan Law. So you are protected. If you administer naloxone and they didn't want you to or if it wasn't an opioid overdose, if it was a heart attack or a seizure, you're protected. And if it's not an opioid overdose, this does not hurt them. So worst case scenario, there really is none, because okay. if it is, this is going to save their life. So the first thing you do is sternum rub. Try to wake them up. Sternum rub, okay. Yeah. That hurts. As hard as you can. It hurts. That hurts. That it hurts. hurts. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, going to yeah, wake yeah. them up. So naloxone looks like this. So this is what you're going to get out of that box. Okay. Okay? It's a nasal spray. Super easy. If you ever used Afrin in your life or any other allergy medicine, right. that's all. So all you do is sternum rub, try to wake the person up. They don't wake up. You take this, stick it in their nose, and hit the button. That's it. Then you're going to want to call 911 um, and then roll them on their side and, and wait until paramedics come. Does Do they wake up automatically? How does that, like, is it like you're ODing right now, but all of a sudden you're like, bloom, the lights come on, or how does that work? It can't sometimes. Sometimes it takes a couple minutes. The most important thing is you want the person to be breathing. So even if they don't like pop up, if they don't seem like they're awake, as long as they are still breathing, that's that, that's what we want. So this enables breathing. That's what it does. Oh, so that helps some the airwaves. Go. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's that's okay. Because I thought like you know you be seeing on TV the movies, <laughs> they take the Narcan and they're like, Woo, hey. I mean that happens. Like that you know can what I mean? happen. Like, they wake for sure. Up all of a sudden, like. Yeah, and and that does happen in, in certain cases, and and. and that's what we want, of course. But when you call 911, the paramedics come. As long as they're still breathing, they're still alive, and then they can do what they need to do to make sure that that person is good. So how can one get this? Like, is it? can I go to my grocery store and grab it? Can I go out and go to a medical provider? Do you need insurance to have it? Like, how does one have that? Because I would love to carry that around to help somebody out. Absolutely. How does that happen? So you can go to your local health department. You can also go to beforeitstoolate.maryland.gov. And there's a list of opioid response programs all across the state. And if you call them, and then you can just go pick up or they'll mail it to you. And there's a million different ways. Also, if you have insurance, you can get it a prescription. Uh, you don't need one in the state of Maryland, though. And soon it will be available over the counter. Now, so I'm, I'm going to switch subjects real quick. Because it just dawned on me something. In Maryland, now this is going to sound, because you work in this, we work in this lane. <laughs> I know fentanyl, fentanyl has been created, I know, mm -hmm. but we're not going to get de in depth of it. But I know certain states or may or may not have where they have testers now. Yes. Does the health do, do you guys work in that arena or you guys don't really Yeah, we have, we have fentanyl test strips. The okay. opioid yeah, response yeah, yeah, programs do, yes. All this. And the Center for Harm Reduction has them as well. Um, there are 22 syringe service programs around the state and they also have fentanyl test strips. Because that's a big thing right now, fentanyl, and everybody's yes. overdosing from that. And that's what's been killing a lot of people. Absolutely. So I, I just know that a lot of people do participate in some recreational things mm -hmm. that, uh, we know, we lost a great... Um, actor michael k williams who was in the wire who, who had fentanyl and cocaine and like it was like right you know so those are things yes. i'm seeing with a lot of different people so i didn't know if you guys had that yeah. information also. we do have the test strips and you know it's scary because cocaine has fentanyl in it right now not not all of it yes. but, but some of it so people are using substances that they don't know that they're using right it's very scary so that's why this is important right. to have the ties in yes, yes. Yes, because so, you may think you're doing something and it, it's actually something else. Right. 
So no, that, that, that's educated. I'm glad that you came on because it's really important to everybody. Everybody, it's just a wake up call, help people out. And to have something like that, just like having like, uh, you know, you know how to do CPR. You should know how to Absolutely. do this. And that should be trained in schools. That's my personal opinion. Like going to, at, at jobs, you just never know. Yes. And whatnot. You, know, you never know. And it, and what we've learned, I think, from this epidemic is that people who use drugs look like me. They look like you. Right. They look like everyone in this conference. Right. You know, it doesn't discriminate. So you never, you never know. Someone may look a certain way. You may think something about their lifestyle, and you never know. So this is important. It can save a life. All right. You know we got to do speed round, right? Let's do it. You know we got to do speed round. <laughs> you know we got to do it. You know we got to throw it back. All right. Let's do oh, it. Oh, man. We <laughs> might not have to do it because somebody is doing some live testing. But we're going to still go through that, though. Um, we're going to do a quick speed round. All so right. do you like spring or fall? Spring. Favorite R&B concert you've gone to? Oh man, I've uh, gone I, gotta, I gotta stomp oh, you. That's... See, I gotta stomp you here. <sighs> is this R? This really is an R and B, but I got to see Michael Jackson once. I feel okay. like that just what about that, rock? that trumps everything. What about rock band? Aerosmith. Aerosmith. All okay. day. All right. What's, what's your favorite <laughs> meal to eat? Crab legs. That's not from Maryland. Come on I, now. I like crabs too. All right. Well, crab, you said crab legs. I'm... Crab legs. That's Alaska. I mean, they're easier. <laughs> Hamburger or cheeseburger? Cheeseburger. Hot dog or sausage? Hot dog. All right. You are. Do people man. answer hamburger? Yeah. Some people are just. Oh, that makes just, my soul some hurt. Some people like hamburgers, you know? I, I don't know. No, if it has. It, come on. It's got to have cheese. <laughs> <laughs> well, again, thank you so much for hanging out. I'm glad you educated us. Let me, let's grab that one more time and put it in front of the camera because that's so important. Well, it's yours now, so you can put it yes, in front of the camera. Yes, so, folks, and, really, let's talk about the health and whatnot. What else do you have? Well, I brought you a have. brochure just to take with you, and then I brought you this bracelet that you have to wear now because it says you carry naloxone and you can save a life. I wear this proudly. There you go. Hey, thank you. Secretary Keller, Special Secretary Keller, thank you so much. Thank you. The No Picks After Dark podcast is fueled by Zeke's Coffee. Have you tried their coffee yet? I'm telling you, there's something different about it. Maybe it's because they roast their beans in a fluid coffee roaster, which provides the most accurate roasting temperatures and made with love. You will just have to check it out for yourself and try their delicious food while you're at it. Open now for curbside service, online ordering, carry out, and they also do wholesale. Visit Zeke's Coffee at 4719 Hartford Road. Open Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday, 8 to 5 p.m. Kitchen closes at 3 p.m. Or visit Zeke'sCoffee.com and you too can be fueled by Zeke's. We are live, folks. What an amazing conference. Thank you so much to ML for having No Picture of Dark here. And we have a special guest. It's my second or third time interviewing that's you, right, Mr. Governor. That's right. Mr. Governor Westmore, how are you doing today? My man, it's great to see you. Good great to, see to be you. back on No Picks. I love it. I love it. We started at uh, Afram. That's right. And then we did Mako. That's right. And then we're back here again. At That's ML. right. I'm excited. Third time's a charm, too. That's what they say. That's what they say. <laughs> so tell us a little bit about how has this whole thing been coming, touring the whole facility and being down here? It's been amazing, man, because it's, um, you know, we, we really pride ourselves in moving in partnership. Everything that we do as an administration, everything that we want to do in this moment for Maryland, we are doing it together. And to come down here and spend time with so many friends, spend time with so many partners, spend time with people who, you know, we've been working in communities with a lot of these local elected officials, uh, local elected officials since, since inauguration day, uh, to now spend some time and really plan and strategize uh, has been spectacular, where we literally have our entire, our entire cabinet is here at MML. We have over 27 cabinet officials and agency heads that are here right now in Ocean City. So this is, this is beautiful for us because we're getting a lot of good work done. Wow, I, I tell people this all the time, like, you know, we had Secretary uh, Jake Day Yes, today, Jake Day. And he said, we leave nobody behind. That's right. That the model you guys have going. That's right. And it was very interesting. He was like, you're talking about housing. And right. I really appreciate it. Talk about how Baltimore housing and things of that nature. And I like that model. What, how, do we, how do we parlay this to here, like leave nobody behind at this conference? How do we do that? Well, you know, it's, it's funny because um, we, during the entire campaign, we said, leave no one behind. Okay. And 
was telling folks, you know, and I first, I first got that when I was in the military. I was 17 years old when I first joined the Army. And that was something they taught to us in our first days of the military. Leave no one behind, ever, right? And it didn't just become a campaign slogan. It's a value statement. And frankly, when you look at the way that our administration works, that's the lens in which we make our policy decisions. We don't do policies where we're leaving people behind. Because we believe that in order for Maryland to truly grow, it means that everybody must have the opportunity to grow. In order for Maryland to truly win this decade, it means everyone must have an opportunity to participate in that win and not just some people. And so we know that in order for that to happen, it means that we're going to have to work with every level of government and every sector of our society. So the beautiful thing about MML is, you know, here you have local elected officials, you have mayors, you have county council people, you have city council people, you have NGOs that are here represented, you have the private sector that's all here. This is what a community mosaic actually looks like. And that's why I think this conference is so important for us not just to show up. We're not showing up for showing up's sake. We're showing up because these are our partners inside the work. And that's why I am just completely certain that this is going to be Maryland's decade because we're doing it in partnership. And, and I love hearing that because that's so important. I've been here the whole last couple of days. Amazing. Learned so many different municipalities, yes. uh, working out in Prince George's County. Yes. I met with a couple of mayors from out there. They're like, let's make it happen. I That's want right. you to come out there and go spread the word because you have something that we want to talk about. So I love that you've gone. You've, you've been everywhere. Yes. You were the hardest working governor I've ever seen in my life, okay? <laughs> I'm going to tell you, I, every time I look up, I'm like, he's everywhere. But what do you want to say to the listeners who aren't here about MML and, like, just why you, they should be part of this going yeah. forward? What, what would you say? You know, I, I, I say that um, – one of the biggest th threads that we're seeing through MML, it's about the idea of partnership, but it's also about the idea of service. Mm -hmm. You know, during, um, during my inaugural and also during uh, the first state of the state that I gave, I said that I want Maryland to be the state that serves. That in this time of political divisiveness and political vitriol and where people seem to care more about where the idea come from than is it a good idea? that service is actually gonna to help to save us. Mm. The beautiful thing about MML is these are all people who have raised their hands to serve. And for some of them, they are literally working multiple jobs. For some people, they are a mayor and taking on additional jobs. Right. For some people, they are a, a, a city administrator and also dealing with a whole series of family obligations that they have to, they're the primary person who's taking the lead on. But these are people who are choosing to serve. And so the message that I want for everybody in our state is I want everybody in our state to serve right. in some way, shape or form. I want you to be engaged. I want you to be involved. I want this to be the state that gets to know each other again, mm. because if we get to know each other again, we then realize that the things that oftentimes we're told to fight about are insignificant and ridiculous, that we have the same unified goal, but we've got to serve and get to know each other again in order for that to be real. All right, I know we're tight on time, but oh, good. you know we gotta do a quick speed round. Good. You know we gotta do speed round. Of Come course. On. We can't let you get out of, of here course. speed round, okay. So, you know, what, what would you say, you know, we go chicken wings, we always eat chicken wings. We yep. got them, drums or flats? <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta ask the question. Come on, drums or flats? Flats, flats. Okay, all right, all right. That's easy, that's easy, that's easy. Blue cheese or ranch though? That's the, here's a big one. Blue cheese, Ra okay, ranch, ranch, <laughs> blue cheese actually has a flavor. Yes. Ranch is kind of like, it's, it's, it's smooth and it's silky and, it's, and it looks nice. But if you want a flavor to it, you got to go blue cheese. Are you going to go Old Bay style? Of course. Okay, I got to mix it Old Bay of style. Of course. Crabs or crab cakes? Crabs. I tell I people, mean, I, mean, I, I, I like it because, you know what, you're off your phone. That's it. You, you're talking with like, each other. You literally can't touch your phone when right. you're doing crafts. You don't, crabs. Want, to. You don't, you don't want, to. want to touch it. But here's the thing. <laughs> and I tell people, it's like, if you tell me I have five minutes right. to eat, okay, fine. Yeah, you go to crab cake because right. it's filling. But if you tell me, tell me a great afternoon and what does that look like? A great afternoon for me is just sitting there with crabs and beer and friends. That's a great afternoon. And that's so for great. me, crabs, it's, it's, it's easy. That's, that, that sounds amazing. That sounds. And the last thing. Uh-oh. Uh, you, you know I had to do the last thing. All right. Your fa okay, your favorite, just two of them, your favorite R&B group, and if you could see anybody in concert, dead or alive, who would you go see? Ooh. Favorite R&B group of all time? All time. 
Groups, not individuals, groups. Jodeci. Okay, 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 okay. You Jodeci that, of all time. Diary Jod of the Mad Band was one of the best CDs ever. It was, it was. And Forever My Lady, that was one of the best CDs. It was. Okay. But I got to tell you, can I, can I tell you one of my funniest concert experiences? <laughs> I saw Casey and JoJo live once. Okay. And... <laughs> <laughs> Before, wait, which Casey and JoJo? Um, late Casey and oh, JoJo. Okay, like, right. like okay. post all the things yeah, yeah, that went yeah, on. Yeah. And I saw them in concert once, and they were performing all of the. They were performing. <laughs> they were performing all their new songs, oh. which nobody knew. Right. Right. They had like you know all my life was was all one my of them. Life, yeah. But no one. They they were playing like their new album, and everybody's like standing in the crowd, like we don't know any of these songs. <laughs> And then so they actually, they literally run behind stage and then there's, a, there's this computer sound. It's like, yeah. and they literally change clothes behind stage. They ran back out the other side of the stage and they said, we're Jodeci now. And they started singing all the Jodeci songs. And I was like, first, I was like, that was the corniest intro I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> but everybody was dancing because they were playing the Jodeci songs I at that you. point. So the best of the best of all time, Jodeci. Okay. If I could see a, the, a concert. Dead or alive, they could be dead or alive. Whoever you want to see right now, who would you go see? And it has to be a group. It could be anybody. So I tell you, one of my one of my great regrets is I never saw Prince live. That was a real regret for me. And okay. and, and and I say Prince and Michael Jackson because I think they're both extraordinary performers. Right, right. But if I had to say one person, the fact that I have never seen Prince, never saw Prince live, mm -hmm. is a that's a regret for me. Michael That's Jackson. Michael Jackson's for me. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want to see, like, you know, I saw, you know, the best, best Super Bowl halftime show. I, it was, I mean, it was crazy. Right. I mean, MJ. Now, Beyonce put on a great show too. Hey, I get it. Beyonce put on a great show. But he's the only person I know who could go from the scoreboard and pop up in the middle of the city. That is true, but that Beyonce, Beyonce's the only one to actually shut the lights off. Yeah, true. Facts, 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 facts. And remember, that was the time the, the Ravens, Ravens won the Super Bowl, facts, so facts. I always got to give the hat tip to the Ravens. Facts, facts. Well, thank you so much, Mr. Governor, for coming on the show. My God, uh, and We you. had a great time. Thank you, everybody, for coming to MML. Thank you, Ms. Teresa. Thank you for making this happen because thank we you. made this fruition and, and back in at, at January. Said, Aaron, we want to have you here. So thank you guys so much. Appreciate y'all, and All I appreciate right. you. All right. Thank y'all.